We're asked to determine the limits if they exist. Notice both limits involve the same rational function. First, we have the limit of the quantity x minus six divided by the square of x minus three as x approaches zero. The first thing to notice here is that the irrational function is continuous at as well as around x equals zero, and therefore we can determine this limit by performing direct substitution. If we substitute zero for x, we have the quantity zero minus six divided by the square of the quantity zero minus three. Simplifying, we have negative six divided by the square of negative three, which is positive nine. The limit is equal to negative two thirds. We will verify this graphically in just a moment. Looking at our second limit, we have the limit of the same rational function now as x approaches three. We'll notice how the rational function is undefined at x equals three, because at x equals three we have division by zero, and therefore we cannot find this limit by performing direct substitution. But let's still see if we can analyze the behavior of this function as x approaches three from the right and the left. Well, as x approaches three, the numerator is going to approach three minus six or negative three, and in the denominator, x minus three is going to approach a zero from either the positive side or the negative side, depending on whether we approach three from the right or the left. But because we're squaring x minus three, the denominator is always going to be positive and approach zero. So if the numerator is approaching negative three and the denominator is always positive and approaching zero, then the function vi's will decrease without bound and approach negative infinity. If that's a little abstract, we will now verify this using a table as well as a graph. Let's first verify the first limit where we're approaching x equals zero. So if we sketch the vertical line x equals zero, which is the y-axis, we can see from the graph, if we approach x equals zero from the left and from the right, we are approaching the same point that is a point on the function, this point here, where this point is, the point zero comma negative two thirds, where we know we can find the y coordinate function value by substituting zero for x into the function. And now let's verify the second limit. So because we are approaching three, we need to approach three from both the left and the right side. Looking at the table first, let's approach x equals three from values less than three. Looking at the table, you can see I use 2.9, 2.99, 2.999. These values are approaching positive three from values less than three. And looking at the corresponding function values, we can see they decrease without bound. And now we need to check from the right side or approach three from values greater than three, which I've already set up here, 3.1, 3.01, 3.001 as we approach three from the right or positive side, once again, we can see the function values decrease without bound. And then going back to the graph, because we are approaching x equals three, let's sketch a vertical line at x equals three. Notice how this is actually a vertical asymptote of the graph. As we approach x equals three from the right or values greater than three, the function values decrease without bound and as we approach x equals three from the left, our values less than three, once again, the function values decrease without bound, and therefore the limit of the rational function as x approaches three approaches negative infinity. So we normally indicate this equals negative infinity, but remember negative infinity is not a real number. This actually indicates the limit does not exist because it's not approaching one specific real number. I hope you found this helpful.